Tonight we're going to do a study on Jesus. Who is Jesus? You know, because when you first get saved, a lot of people don't know who Jesus really was and who he is. Uh, you know, I know I didn't. When I first started serving God, I just really didn't know. I hear a lot of different things and I really couldn't answer questions about who Jesus really was. And I, and I would listen to what other people tell me about who he was. Uh, you know, people would say stuff about the Trinity and they would tell you, well, there's three persons, three individual persons, you know, Jesus Christ, which is the Son and then the Holy Ghost and the Father. But, and these three are different persons and, uh, but they are in agreement and, and you know, when you don't know any better, you accept pretty much what people tell you if you just don't know. I mean, it sounds good. I mean, I know there's a Jesus Christ. I know the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit and I know the uh, Bible also talks about God the Father. So, you know, it sounded good to me uh, and it sounds good to a lot of people. But, you know, a lot of people just did not know who Jesus really was. Even his disciples didn't really know who Jesus was. And he would even ask the question, you know, who do men say that I am? And it was, he didn't ask the question because he didn't know the answer. He would ask the question, you know, to see what they were going to say, even though he knew what they were going to say. But he wanted to raise this question because a lot of times Jesus would ask questions just for the sake of the other people that he was asking, not for himself, not out of his curiosity, because he knew all things. There was nothing that Jesus didn't know. And sometimes it was just simply for other people's sake, the people who were uh, on the side, the people who were listening. It's the same way, you know, sometimes we ask our children questions and, and we don't particularly ask them a question because we don't already know the answer. Actually, we know the answer, but we just want to hear them say it. And not only sometimes we just want to hear them say it, but we also want uh, the, the, the siblings to hear what they're going to say because we know that it's somehow it's going to benefit them. And we know that they're going to uh, receive some type of answer or some type of information. So Jesus would do the same thing. He would stir up a question and ask, you know, who do men say that I am? Because if you notice, you know, after that, they start saying, oh, some people say you're this, that, and the other, John the Baptist, and some people say, you know, that you're Elijah, and, you know, everybody has something to say, because that's really how it is. You know, there's a lot of speculations going on, you know, when you don't really know someone. You know, you just have to pretty much go on what's being said or what's being heard through the grapevine. So, but, you know, Jesus would, would, would ask them, you know, after that, well, who do you say I am? You know, and, and, and Peter, you know, stood up and, and he, you know, told him that you are the Christ. You know, you are the Christ. And, you know, Jesus told him, you know, that flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you. But anyway, you know, I want to look at tonight, I want to look at who Christ really was, because there, there are a lot of religions that simply don't know who he is, and a lot of them, they give you a different Jesus. They don't understand exactly who Jesus really was. And you have different religions who believe that Jesus was even an angel. Uh, that some uh, religions, like uh, particularly uh, 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 Jehovah Witness, they believe that Jesus was uh, Michael. And, and and the arch angle, yes, they they actually believe this. And then you have some people they they they, they believe that Jesus was just simply a prophet, uh, not being the true uh, son of God or God in the flesh. They believe that Jesus is just another prophet, just like you had many prophets. That's particularly the uh, Muslim faith, Islam faith, and uh, then you have some people just believe that Jesus was, you know, just another. Again, prophet or just another man of God, you know, a person that uh, was just as equal to other individuals, uh, particularly Mary and, and other people. They felt like he was just an equal partner. But tonight we want to look at who Jesus really was. Let's look at Matthew's chapter four. We're going to look at Matthew's chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. 
we're going to look at a lot of scriptures tonight because there's quite a few scriptures here. And this is not all of them, but what we're going to look at tonight is just a lot of scriptures that really show us exactly who Christ was and who he is. And it leaves us without doubt, you know, who he was or who he is. Matthews chapter four, we're going to look at, let's look at verses eight through 10. And we know that this is the, the particular time where Jesus had been fasting. And this is the time when he was being tempted on this particular mountain by the devil. But let's just look at this one particular temptation. It says, and, and starting in verse eight, it says, and again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto them, get thee hence or behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Now look at this. It says that he said that, that he would give him all these things that if, if, if Jesus would just fall down and worship him. And, and Satan simply didn't know who he was dealing with because in his eyes, just like other people's eyes who thought about Jesus as just being another prophet, another person, uh, another uh, uh, a person that Satan could come and tempt or cause to do some uh, wickedness or whatever, that if he would paint certain pictures in Jesus' eyes, that Jesus would fall under this temptation and end up uh, going against the things of God. But the thing is, Satan didn't really know himself who he was dealing with. He didn't even understand that this was God in the flesh. And that's why he came to Jesus to tempt him, asking him to worship me. But you notice Jesus says that only the Lord thy God shall anyone worship. But Satan wanted him, uh, uh, being a, a, a devil, for him to fall down and worship him. But let's look at something. I'm trying to paint a picture here. Let's look at uh, Revelations chapter 22. Revelations chapter 22, and we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship thee, or before thee or before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. So here we see where even the angel would not allow someone to bow down and worship them. Look at this in Acts. Let's look at Acts chapter 10, verse 25. Now, this particular man named Cornelius uh, had had a dream and, uh, you know, God showed him that he needed to contact uh, Peter and, you know, that Peter would teach him about God. And it says in, in verse 25, it says, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. 
Now, you know, this is not the only place, but we could see throughout the Bible that none of the angels, none of the, the apostles or disciples, none of the men of God never allowed anyone to fall down and worship them. Because everyone knows, even the angels in heaven knows, that there is only one God that can be worshipped. It don't matter if I'm an angel and I'm up in heaven, there's only one particular God that can be worshipped. And, and, and that's the God of gods, you know, the, the, the Father. And, and you notice here that, you know, all the disciples would, would tell them, hey, stand up, I'm, I'm just a servant just like you are. And notice, even when Jesus, as we read, uh, uh, Jesus, when he was confronted and, and he told uh, the devil that uh, the, the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve, you know, because he wanted, uh, G Satan wanted Jesus to fall down and worship him. But Jesus says, it's only the Lord God that should be worshiped. It's only him. Notice he didn't say, uh, but maybe Mary or, or but but maybe uh, some of the angels. He he didn't say anything other than the Lord thy God. He, as a matter of fact, he put the word only on there because you cannot possibly worship anyone other than God. He is the only one that is worthy of all the honor, the glory, and the praise. So we can never worship or, 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 or worship another angel or, or worship anyone other than God. But let's look at this. There was something about Jesus Christ that was a bit different than any of the angels, than any of the so-called what they considered prophets, or any other man or woman of God, there was something about him that was completely different because when it came down to Jesus, for some reason or another, he could be worshipped. And, and, and no one would say anything. You know, No one would be rebuked. But let's look at some things here. 